Hey, Matt Haycox here, and we're here for Matt's Monday Masterclass, where as always, every week, I'm answering the questions that you guys have been asking me over social and email in the week before. So today, we're going to talk about how do you pitch to investors. So look, let's assume for the purposes of this, that you've found some investors that you're going to be pitching to. And if you haven't found them, then you've not been following my tips on networking in previous weeks. Now, once you've got, once you've got your investors and you've sat down in front of them, you've got to be 150% prepared. Now, you need to know your audience, and you need to have done your due diligence on them as much as they do it on you. you know, who are they? Have they invested in similar kinds of businesses like this before? What's their area of interest? What are their areas of expertise? Look, if you know that, you can then tailor your pitch to each one of them accordingly. Now, that doesn't mean that when you're with them, you need to lick their arse and tell them how amazing they are due to you know, their previous successes. You know, sure, be polite, but what you want to know is what particular successes have they had. You know, if they've been successful in the supermarket sector, for example, and you're looking for an investor you know, for a new product that you want to launch into supermarkets across the UK, then that's, they're probably going to be really helpful, and it's probably useful that you can you know, tailor your pitch to that angle accordingly. Next, you've got to know your numbers inside out. Profitability, cash flow, margins, KPIs, cost per acquisition, whatever it is that's relevant to your business, you've got to know them absolutely inside out. Now look, even if finance isn't your particular forte, you're still going to have a really strong helicopter view of the financials of your business. If you're not going to be the right person to talk to in the granular detail, and it's appropriate that you know you, you need to take an accountant with you, a finance director with you, a finance partner, you know, someone who knows that information better than you, then take them along. But you've got to understand it yourself from a top level. You know, you're the founder, you're the CEO. You've got to know these headline numbers, and you've got to be fluent with them. But it is important that you have someone who can talk in that level of granular detail. And if it isn't you, acknowledge that and bring someone who it is. Thirdly, Know your valuation and therefore what it is that you're asking for. Now, I've spoken about valuation of businesses a lot in my prior videos. You've got to make sure that your, that your valuation is realistic and it's fair. There's nothing that's going to turn a potential investor off more than an absolutely ridiculous valuation. Now, look, that's not to say there's not going to be a bit of negotiation. But let's just say for argument's sake, if your business is genuinely worth 2 million quid and you want to set a valuation of 2.5 million quid you know, to maybe have 10 or 15% you know, negotiating space, then go for it by all means. But don't set it at 15 million because no one's going to be impressed. It's just going to completely kill your credibility with the rest of your numbers. You know, if you're the kind of person who thinks your business is worth 15 million quid when it's really worth two, then how can that investor possibly trust you when you start talking about turnover or cash flow or profitability? You know, they're not going to trust any of your numbers. If there's no credibility in these key facts, then there's going to be no credibility in your numbers as a whole. Now, when it comes to your business plan or to, or to your kind of pitching conversation with the investor, look, nobody wants war and peace. Now, certainly in the first stages of pitching investors, you know, they're going to want to know what the product is, how are you going to monetize it, who's going to buy it, you know, what are the key metrics, what are the headline economics. Look, if you can get past them with all of this, then probably for meeting number two, meeting number three, it's going to get a lot more granular. But don't meet someone on the first day and bore the living daylights out of them. Now, what's really important is to be adaptable, to be flexible. You know, don't be arrogant about this. You know, bear in mind that these people that you're meeting, they're certainly going to have more money than you, and they're probably going to have a lot more knowledge of your sector than you. Now, if they haven't, then maybe you're picking the wrong investors because as I've spoken about in earlier things, it's important to pick people not just for the money, but for, you know, for what other things that they can bring to the table. But listen, even if they don't have superior knowledge of your sector, there's probably people who've built businesses up, who've been successful, and their experience is certainly worth listening to. So don't be wedded exactly to your plan. So look, I'm not saying like be a people pleaser for the sake of it and change your plans on a wholesale basis every time an investor, you know, wants to wants to kind of throw their two penny within. You know, but certainly be open to change and be open to people's opinions, you know, especially these opinions from people who might be able to add value for you. Then you just need to get on with it. Pitching to investors is like any other part of sales within your business. You've got to make sure you've got enough prospects at the at the top of the funnel. And obviously prospects in this in this instance is investors. If you've got enough investors in there, when it comes down to trying to close a deal, you're going to ensure that you're not going to get strong-armed into accepting a deal that you don't want to. Now, if you can follow all of that, then you're on with a fighting chance of getting the investment you need. So I hope it helps. Get out there, go find some money, and I look forward to talking to you all again next week.